We'll be joined by Kevin Durant shortly. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Kevin Durant also joining the podium. You heard Steve Nash say after James Harden came up with a hamstring in injury, we pursued and persevered. Kevin Durant with 29 points for the Nets. Ready? Okay, ready with Kevin. Start off from Malika Andrews, ESPN. Hey, Kevin, uh, two for you. One, when Blake Griffin, when Mike James, when Landry Shannon is getting up for those sorts of dunks, when the others are participating like that, how does that change or impact the potency of this team? Yeah, I mean, we expect everybody to come out there if they play and uh, play hard. And, um, you know, tonight guys came out there with extreme focus and just tried to be aggressive on both ends, not do too much, keep the game basic, and we was able to get some stops and some scores. When you saw James struggling, what was your initial reaction to that? I didn't, I didn't realize what, uh, what had happened until he had uh, started walking off the court. Uh, but we were supposed to run a play, and he wasn't in the spot. And then I looked at him, and he was grimacing. So this shit sucks. It sucks. It sucks out because I want I want him to be out there. I know how much he cares. I know how much he wants to be in this moment. Um, it sucks, you know. I, I you know wish he just, uh, him a speedy recovery. We're gonna keep him involved as as much as possible. But I mean, it's just a bad break. Greg Logan, Newsday. Greg, you're muted. Kevin, sorry, it took me a minute to unmute. Uh, just how do, you, how do you gauge how this team handled the emotional blow of losing Harden? I mean, you still got, you guys still played a, a terrific uh, defensive game. You know, just did, did all this adversity that you've had all season kind of prepare you for this moment? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we try not to be too emotional out there, but losing you know, one of your leaders like that, this first player of the game, you know, it definitely uh, we had to regroup for a couple of minutes and figure out what was next. But I think coaches, the coaching staff did a great job of moving forward and guys came in and just tried to play extremely hard. We didn't care about anything else but playing and executing the game plan and just, you know, leaving it all out there. So, you know, we're going to be thinking about James. We're going to be you know, I'm definitely going to call him when I leave here, see how he's doing. But like I said, it's just a, a fuck. Sorry, it's just a bad situation, man. I just, I hate that. I hate that it had to happen to him right now. Alex Schiffer, the Athletic. Hey Kevin, you guys forced Milwaukee into shooting twenty percent from three, and then forced a ton of turnovers on them and capitalized on them. What'd you like about the defense tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think we were just. Uh, you know, really after the first quarter, um, the offensive rebounding, I think we did a solid job more after that. You know, I think that's what got them going and had us down like 10 in the first quarter, them getting extra possessions. Uh, and that's what they thrive on. And I know they're not going to miss that many shots, six for 30. They're not going to miss that many shots. But if we, uh, you know, they shot only three more shots than us. And when we played them before, they shoot 14, 15 more shots than us. So. We just got to rebound the basketball, play extremely hard, and, and realize this team is a huge, you know, long team, big team. So we got to all be in the paint, helping each other out. And it's going to be a fun series. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Going on, Kevin. Um, what type of impact does Bleak have on a game when he's diving all over the floor and, and making those plays on those balls like he did today? Well, I mean, when he, just, when he plays like that, uh, you know, it just ignites the whole crowd, and ignites our team. And he's diving on the floor, playing tough and big as a center. Um, and a lot of guys have, you know, moved down, I guess, as far as like guarding bigger players in this series. So um, Blake is one of those guys that's been battling all series. And, I mean, just all playoffs, and then the first game, uh, played 35 minutes and grind like that. You know, very, uh, very promising start to the series. But we got our, we got our work cut out for us. We got a long ways to go. Brian Mahoney with AP. Hey, hey, Kevin, it looked like when you picked up your fourth foul about a minute and a half left in the third quarter, you kind of waved right away to Steve that you didn't want to come off the floor. Um, why did you want to stay in that moment? And then you scored, I think, seven in a row right there. How much of an important stretch was that to get you guys going to the final quarter? Yeah, I thought it was an important stretch. It was only a minute to go, and I'm, I've been in the league for too long. So if I had got my fifth foul, uh, that would have just been a lack of IQ. So I just tried to play smart and realize that we needed to score some baskets going into the fourth. Um, and I was able to get some free throws, a nice little uh, three-pointer at the end. So 
Um, I just just got to play smarter next game. I, 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 you know, the two fouls I got in the third quarter, um, you know, I just got to be better. Vincent Goodwill, Yahoo Sports. <laughs> KD, injuries have been such a big story this year in the playoffs all the way around, even before James' situation. And I mean, when you're preparing and you're looking around the league and everything else, like, does that come into your mind? Do you try to keep all that stuff out? Like, how do you mentally prepare and not let the possibilities of the negative stuff like that come <laughs> into play? I mean, it's just it's a life lesson. You know, you focus on what you can control. You know, that's one of those things that you can't control, like somebody get injured or what can happen in the future. I mean, we're looking around the league and seeing what's happening, but, you know, we focus on ourselves, each, each of us individually. And when it's time to come together as a collective, we focus on that. So, um, you know, it's, we just control what we can control, man. And like I said, hopefully um, James is getting better by the minute, getting treatment by the minute, and uh, we'll see how he feels. Stephen Bondi, New York Daily News. Hey, Kevin, were you able to talk to James Harden at all? And, no. Um, can you relay how he might be feeling you know, mentally with the injury and how I he looked? I wouldn't talk to James even if I did talk to him, especially to you, Stephon. So, no, nah, I didn't talk to him. Ian O'Connor, New York Post. Yeah, Kevin, I know you don't want to think of James being out for an extended period of time, but if you do have to go the rest of the series without him, how confident are, are you that you still have enough to, to prevail in the series? I'm not even thinking like that. I'm taking it a day at a time, a second at a time, you know, get ready for practice tomorrow. Like, uh, we're not really thinking that far, you know. We're just trying to take it a game at a time. We'll see what happens. Thanks for your time, Kevin. Thanks. That he had to miss tonight. I mean, this guy was so ready and excited to play tonight. Um, and you know the preparation he puts in. You know how much he cares about the game, how much he cares about his team. So you never want to see that when someone's you know gives gives everything they have towards this. Brian Mahoney, AP. Hey, Steve, along those lines, you know, how do you sort of meet the uh, transition right there? I, I assume pretty quickly you've got to figure out who's going to play, who hasn't played, and. and you know, what kind of rotations are going to change there, uh, you know, 40 seconds into a game, how difficult a challenge was that? That was tough. You know, we, you prepare a certain way. Um, you know, we already had questions coming in uh, that we were going to try to answer as we went along. And so that just threw a huge one at us. In a sense, it gave us less choice. Um, but, you know, when you prepare for a game and he's such a big part of the game plan, um, that, that can throw you off. So I was proud of the guys that they didn't get rattled. They hung in there um, and got the win. But we'll have to look at it. We'll have to see how we go here and, and watching the film and taking a look at our rotations and our options and see what bu buttons we can push and uh, persevere. Brian Lewis, New York Post. I know uh, your defense, a lot's been made of your defense. Uh, I'm curious what you, your impressions were of your perimeter defense. How much of that was you forcing them to take tough shots, or how much of that was them missing shots that they normally would make? Well, I thought we did a good job, um, you know, defending and making it difficult. They can still make those shots. You know, they're, they're, they're a very capable team. Um, but I, I'm proud of our guys defensively for the effort. Um, we had some really great stretches. Second half in particular was outstanding. We have to continue to build and grow and know that we're probably going to have to weather some storms with this team. Um, but it's, it's about our approach. Like I said before the game, it's about being relentless with our willingness to, to go the extra mile and, and doing it together and hanging in there. And, and I thought tonight we did a great job. There was moments where it was tough on us and we hung in there and we came out the other side in those little pockets of the game and that was really impressive and important for us. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey coach, um, two for you on Blake. Number one, he only took one three, I believe the entire first round and tonight he comes out and shoots what, four for nine from downtown. Was that a, a tactical thing? But